Right then guys, how's it going and welcome back to Your Football Predictions, the series where we try and predict all of the weekend's Premier League games. I'm late, I got really good at posting these on a Wednesday night, but it's been a very busy week. Uh, but next week we'll be back on the Wednesday. Uh, those were my predictions from the weekend gone. Uh, I had a decent week last week. But we're back to normal now because I got no correct scores. Um, and as always, you guys did way better than me. I mean, Brighton grabbing a draw against Liverpool. Um, Chelsea Spurs ended nil-nil. So, you know, there was some tough games in there. But as I say, loads of you guys got involved. I think I got the most likes I've ever had on one of my prediction videos last week. So thank you to everyone who watched, liked and commented your scores. Subscribe if you're not already. Um, but yeah, loads of you guys got one correct score. And in fairness, I think we had about six or seven people who got two correct scores. But this week's winner with three correct scores is Safa. Now, if you actually look at this, Safa got four correct scores. But they were a little bit sneaky and posted this after the Newcastle game had already ended. But... Despite that, they still got three correct scores after that. So well done to you, mate. And remember, if you want to be shouted out in my next predictions video next week, be sure to get your predictions down in the comments below. But as always, we will go through those nine games for this weekend now. So as I say, we only have nine games this weekend, and that is because the game on Friday night between... Aston Villa and Newcastle has been postponed. I've already talked about it on the channel um, as a Newcastle fan. Um, so if you want to check that out, please do. Basically, the game has been postponed due to the Newcastle United squad having an outbreak of the virus. So, you know, it's serious stuff. Hopefully all the players are feeling better soon. But we will continue on with the predictions starting on Saturday afternoon, 12.30 kickoff on BT Sport. We have got Burnley taking on Everton. Burnley are currently sitting in 19th place down in the relegation zone. They are two points off 17th. So two points off getting out of that relegation zone. And I mean, there's still plenty of time. Uh... But we are 10 games in. Um, it doesn't feel like two seconds ago the league started up again. And it is going to get a lot of games around the Christmas period. So Burnley are going to want to try and get those points in, try and creep up the board. I mean, if we look at the last three games, the drew against Brighton, the won against Crystal Palace, and then the lost against Man City at the weekend. So, I mean, a 5-0 loss, I bet they didn't feel great after that. But it is Man City. A win and a draw, the two games previous, you know, they are pulling in a few points. Taking on Everton, who are currently sitting in 8th place. Um, two points off 4th. So, you know, it is still very tight in the league at the moment. If we look at Everton's last five games, they have lost 4 and won 1. Losing against Leeds at the weekend, a promoted side. You know, you think... Back to the start of the season when Everton were thumping everyone. Uh, and all of a sudden, last five, they've lost four. So, looking at this one, I have backed Everton to win 1-0. I can't see there being loads of goals in this one. Burnley might fancy the chances against an Everton side who haven't been in great form. Uh, but Everton do still have Calvert-Lewin who can score. Hamed Rodriguez, um, Richarlison, they've got some very good players. And you know, not to say that Burnley don't, but I've just edged it that way. Next up again on the Saturday at 3 o'clock on BT Sport, we have got Man City taking on Fulham. Man City uh, currently sitting in 11th place, believe it or not. Last five games have won two, drawn two and lost one. Winning against Burnley 5-0 at the weekend. Uh, they did also draw against Porto in the Champions League the other night. So, Man City in 11th. The last five, won two, drawn two, lost one. I mean, it doesn't sound like the form that I would have predicted for Man City at the start of the season. But, 5-0 win over Burnley at the weekend. Um, can they carry that on in, into the game against Fulham? Fulham are in 17th place, so... 
uh, just out of the relegation zone following their win against Leicester at the weekend, which is a huge win for them as well. Um, I think Fulham will be very pleased with the win against Leicester, who were a very good side. Can they better that and also beat Man City this weekend? I mean, never say never. As I say, as much as City did just thump Burnley at the weekend 5-0, there's no saying you know which Man City's gonna gonna turn up on the day. Um, I was gutted that Sterling didn't play for my fantasy team. Uh, hopefully Sterling can play in this game and get a couple of goals. So I've bat Man City 3-1. It's not quite 5-0. I could potentially see Fulham getting a goal. Um, let me know down below what you think. Moving on again on the Saturday, but at 5.30 on Sky, we have got West Ham taking on Man U. So West Ham are now sitting in fifth place after winning their last three games in a row. Uh, isn't bad going, is it? They beat Villa 2-1 at the weekend. Uh, I was listening to the radio the other day and they were talking about uh, West Ham wanting to extend David Moyes' contract. You know, you think not too long ago when Moyes was in, then he was out, then he was back, and he wanted a new contract, but they didn't know whether they were going to give him one. And now, after a great upturn in form for West Ham, you know, he's the one calling the shots a little bit. So, you know, that's quite quite cool to see for him. Um, and West Ham have, have had a decent little fixture run. You know, they've, they did have a tougher start to the season, and now they're playing the team's that you know they would hope to be beating some of the some of the promoted teams and then getting a great win against Villa as well. Uh taking on Man U who are in ninth place, who have also won their last three Premier League games in a row, beating Southampton 3-2 at the weekend. Uh and if anything epitomizes Man U this season, I think it is that 3-2 win against Southampton. When I spoke about it last week, I literally spent the, the whole talk on the Man uh, Man U Southampton game saying that Southampton have looked great, they've been in great form, they've won all the last five games, but I think Man U will still win. And someone actually commented on it and said, how is that good reasoning? And that's the thing, there wasn't any good reasoning, but I was right. Man U were 2-0 down and managed to turn it round 3-2. I just think the fact that they've got the players like Bruno Fernandes um, can just make a difference in a game, even if they might not be the better team. So, similar to that, I've backed Man U to win 2-1. I mean, as I say, West Ham are looking really good. Could they pull something over on Man U? Very possibly. Southampton weren't too far off doing it. Uh, but I've I've nicked it to Man U. Next up on the Saturday, again, at 8 o'clock on Sky, we have got Chelsea taking on Leeds. So, Chelsea sitting in third place. Uh Nil-nil draw with Spurs at the weekend. I don't think anyone put nil-nil in their prediction last week. I think I went 1-1. One, one. Um, but, you know, sometimes it happens. Uh, Chelsea haven't lost in their last eight Premier League games. Uh, they beat Seville the other night in the Champions League. There's something like four or five unbeaten in the Champions League as well. So, yeah, Chelsea are looking pretty good is what I'm trying to say. Uh, taking on Leeds, who are current, currently sitting in 12th, who have had a very solid season. If you look at the, the last few games, you know, the draw against Arsenal, uh, then going and beating Everton at the weekend as well. You know, before the season started, you would have probably said they would lose both of those games. Uh, so for them to come out with four points from those two, I think they'd be extremely happy with. And I've also talked about Leeds as being the exciting team who... There's always goals because they're either attacking or they're conceding. You know, 0-0 uh, against Arsenal, 1-0 against Everton, two clean sheets in a row. So not only have they got the potential to score with players like Bamford up front, but they're also managing to keep the goals out as well. Um, can they keep the goals out against Chelsea, who have got an extremely uh, good attacking line? Maybe. Uh, but I have backed Chelsea to win 2-0. Um, as I say, who knows, maybe it'll be nil-nil because that would be another undefeated game for Chelsea and it would be another clean sheet for Leeds so maybe that's not a bad shout but I have backed Chelsea to win it 2-0 
Moving on to the Sunday now at 12 o'clock on Sky, we have got West Brom taking on Crystal Palace. So West Brom currently sitting in 18th place down in that relegation zone, but a huge win for them at the weekend when they went and beat Sheffield United 1-0. As I said last week, it was the, the, battle, the battle of the bottom. Uh, Sheffield United down in bottom place. West Brom have now jumped over Burnley into 18th place, now sitting on six points from the 10 games. So yeah, big up to West Brom. I think they have shown us this season that they can score goals. The problem is they've sometimes let them in as well. Uh, whereas in a game like this, when there wasn't that many um, goals to be scored, or I, I didn't, did I go nil nil in my prediction? I did, and it was one nil to West Brom. So again, it wasn't too far off. Um, taking on Crystal Palace, who was sitting in fifteenth place. Uh, lost to Newcastle at the weekend, uh, which I'm sure they'll be pretty upset about because I did watch the game. I mean, Newcastle looked all right. Uh, we had some decent parts of possession, but I wouldn't say we were the the two nil winners. I mean, it looks great on paper if anyone saw it, but for Crystal Palace, you know, to concede two goals in pretty much the last minute, I'm sure they were pretty um, unhappy with. Um, is Zaha fit again? Because if he's not, I mean, he's been a huge miss for them. They're currently sitting on 13 points from 10 games. So, you know, it, I wouldn't say it's it's good. I wouldn't say it's bad. It's probably what you get if you're sitting in 15th place. And 13 points is actually more than double what West Brom have got. And there's only three place difference. So, you know, for a team like West Brom who don't want to be relegated or don't want to be left in that relegation battle a game like this against a team who's not that much further ahead would be a significant one and I have backed West Brom to win it 1-0 still on the Sunday but at 2.15 on Sky we have got Sheffield United taking on Leicester so I already said it Sheffield United are in 20th place bottom of the league just one point from 10 games uh, the loss against West Brom was a big one, let's be honest. Um, two sides who have struggled to really make a big impact at the start of this season. Uh, you know, I can say it again, I can say it a thousand times, how good was Sheffield United last season? What is the true source of what's happened here? Um, I think only the Sheffield United team and manager can probably answer that. Any Sheffield United fans, let me know your thoughts on what what has happened here? Leicester currently sitting in fourth place. In the last five games, they won three, and then they've lost the last two. So I think they beat Arsenal, Wolves, Leeds. You know, cracking results against you know Arsenal, Le um, Arsenal and Wolves, and then beating the Leeds of the promoted sides. Good little run. And then they've lost the last two. One was against Liverpool, which you know is fair. But you know, a pretty shock result losing against Fulham in the most recent game. So, and Leicester also are playing, possibly right now, in the Europa League as well. So, I have to back Leicester, don't I? I've gone 2-0 Leicester. I mean, I'd love to see Sheffield United turn things around. It was so great to watch last year. Just to see another team kind of fighting for that, like top six, top seven, you know, that's why it's, Great to see a team like Wolves kind of competing in that area. Um, you know, it's very tight up there again this season with teams like West Ham as well. So, you know, maybe this could be the game Sheffield United turn things around against, you know, a Leicester side who did just lose against Fulham. But, I don't know. I, I, Leicester are the favourites. I think I've got to back them. Next up again on the Sunday at 4.30 on Sky, we have got Spurs taking on Arsenal. So, hoping for plenty of goals in this one. Um, will it be nil-nil? Who knows? Uh, Spurs currently sitting in first place. Haven't lost in nine Premier League games, which, I mean, is not bad going at all. I think the last time they lost a game, well, it was, was when they lost against Everton first game of the season. Uh, they did have a very good string of fixtures, uh, to start the season, you know, playing teams that they really should be beating. And I said this um, a good few weeks ago now, and I'll say it again. Uh, Spurs have gone into a tough period of fixtures. 
And if they come out at the other end of it and they're still first in the Premier League, I think they are serious contenders for it. And they haven't done too bad so far. They beat um, Man City uh, last week and then beat and then drew with Chelsea nil nil. So, you know, playing Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal all back to back is going to be tough. And you know what? I think they've well, they've, they've, they've smashed it, beating Man City and drawing against Chelsea. Now what can they do against Arsenal? As for Arsenal, currently sitting in 14th place. Um, I'm just looking at this here. If you think back four weeks ago, they beat Man U. Since then, they've lost to Villa. Drew with Leeds and lost against Wolves. So, you know, it does make you wonder how things change so quickly. Um, both teams are playing in the Europa League tonight as well, I believe. So, no extra rest for either team. Um, Harry Kane does normally like to score against Arsenal. So, would there be a few goals in this one for him, possibly? It's so, uh, yeah, I mean, this is what I'm, it's like the Southampton Man U game. As I said, everything was pointing at Southampton to win that game, but Man U went and did it. I feel like it's not too dissimilar to this one in terms of form, in terms of league position. Um, I think it's pointing at Spurs. But I've gone 1 1. I've, uh, I'm not going to say I sat on the fence. I'm going to say, look at the 0 0 against Chelsea. I think London Derby. Anything can happen, basically. That's why we love the Premier League. And I'd rather it was more exciting than 1-1. But that's what I've gone for. Next up again on the Sunday at 7.15 on Amazon Prime. Um, which is different. So look out for that. <laughs> we have got Liverpool taking on Wolves. So Liverpool are currently sitting in second place. Um, you know... The fact that they are sitting in second place, um, despite the fact that half of the team is seemingly injured, no Van Dijk, um, no Alexander-Arnold, they've been playing 15-year-olds in defence, Salah had the virus, he was unavailable for a week, you know, players like Jota have stepped up and looked brilliant, and the young lads they've been bringing through to play in defence have also been great. However, um, it wasn't enough to keep the the three points in the bag against Brighton. And I've no doubt if you're a Liverpool fan, you might feel hard done to on this one. Um, a penalty decision in the very last moment that Brighton scored. And I'm pretty sure Salah scored earlier that got VAR'd as well. So, I didn't watch the interview, but I did see pictures on my... Um, on my Instagram that Klopp wasn't very happy either. So, yeah, 1-1 draw against Brighton at the weekend. Uh, taking on Wolves, who are currently sitting in 7th place. They are 4 points behind Liverpool. So, you know, 7th to 2nd is just one win and a draw, which isn't a lot at all. Um, in the last 5, Wolves have 1-2, drawn 2, lost 1. So, again pretty middle of the road form uh, but with a good win against Arsenal at the weekend for a prediction I've gone 2-1 to Liverpool um, I think defensively as much as the youngsters have done Liverpool well um, and they did beat Ajax the other night in the Champions League I think Williams was playing it right back Um they are still prone to letting in a goal. So I think it's a fair prediction on a scoreline. I mean, Wolves are very good defensively. Attacking-wise, they've started looking better. Player, I think podent has got a goal at the weekend. So, you know, not just relying on Jimenez to put the ball in the back of the net. Maybe it could be different. Let me know what you think down below. And to finish things off, on the Monday night at 8 o'clock on Sky, we have got Brighton taking on Southampton. So, um, South Coast derby. I don't think it's really a derby. But Brighton, uh, 16th place, 10 points from 10 games. So, you know, pretty much... Ex well, they, didn't, they haven't drawn all 10, but that's pretty much what it is. Uh, they are sitting four points ahead of the relegation zone. And, well, seven points 
behind fifth. So, you know, again, it's just showing how tight this league is. Uh, they did pull off the draw against Liverpool at the weekend, which I'm sure they will be very happy with. Uh, taking on Southampton, who were in sixth place. Um, haven't lost or hadn't lost in seven Premier League games until they lost against Man U. And as I say, they were 2-0 up in that game before losing 3-2. Um, prediction, I actually wrote down 1-1 for this one. But I changed it to 2-1 Southampton. Um, I think they have looked the better side. They have had the better form. Um, so I'm going to back them to win it. And that is it, guys. So those are my predictions up there, as I say, for the nine games this weekend. So be sure to get your predictions down in the comments below. I will go through all of your games before the first game kicks off on Saturday at 12.30. So Saturday, 12.25, I will make an... A note of all of your predictions and I'll be sure to shout out the winner in my next predictions video which will be on Wednesday next week so be sure to look out for that as I say if you are uh, enjoying my prediction videos but you haven't yet hit that subscribe button please do because it makes a, a huge difference to me and the channel again drop a like if you have enjoyed thanks for watching have a great weekend enjoy the football and I'll catch you later